Uh, sir, if you go 10 feet that way, the whole plane will fly properly. Could you help us out? Could you help us out? Thanks. Guys, we got an obesity problem in this country. And I know you're like, is this dude about to make fun of fat people while using his stomach as an armrest? And the answer is yes. I sure am. Okay, you don't have to clap. That's not supposed to be the funniest thing I've said so far, okay? I, I understand where I'm at with this body. I, there's so many little signs that tell you, you need to, you need to fix it, all right? You need to get, get it together. Like, I'm in a way now where if I raise my hand higher than this, I gotta fix my clothes when I put it back down. <laughs> little signs, little signs let you know it's time to clean it up. <laughs> Had another one recently when I was on an airplane and the Delta flight attendant asked me to switch seats to balance out a 747. That will ruin your day instantly. <laughs> and I know it wasn't me, all right? I know it wasn't me. It was where I was sitting versus where there were too many empty seats. But when you're a little self-conscious about your weight, you can't process that. You can't rationalize. That's not what you hear. What you hear is, uh, sir, if you go 10 feet that way, the whole plane will fly properly. Could you help us out? Could you help us out? Thank you. Thank you. It's very kind of you. And if you have to use the restroom, please ring your call button so we can send two people back to your seat. I don't want this, I don't want to go nose up right into the sun, okay? Gotta... Yes, I'll give you some extra Biscoff cookies for you this hassle. Yes, I will. I know they're your favorite, yes. I don't know, I think this is gonna be my year to get it back, you guys. To... That wasn't supposed to be funny either, man. I'm a little optimistic. My weight's gone up and down my entire life, and I blame the Book It program. Um, some of you know, if you're unfamiliar, when I was in elementary school, Pizza Hut decided that the best way to solve the illiteracy problem was to offer children a free personal pan pizza if they read four books or told their teacher that they read four books. And, and it was great. It was great when you were a kid. You got pizza for doing homework. But 25 years later, nobody's making you read books. You're hooked on pizza. That's kind of what I'm going through right now. <laughs> I just love food. And it's not that I eat too much. I just eat the wrong things. I love bad food, you know? But I know I'm not the only one. I mean, Bath and Body Works was selling a candle that smells like mashed potatoes. How fat are you, okay? <laughs> when you want your bedroom to smell like buttered mashed potatoes. <laughs> this fat, I got the gravy one too. You guys, it smelled so good. I'm not gonna lie, I can't lie to you. You're so nice. It smelled just like them. It was buy one, get one. And I got a free bottle of fried chicken body wash because I opened up a credit card to pay for it. Like it was totally a good deal. <laughs> this is, look at this. This is, I am dressed inappropriately for this backdrop. This is, uh, this is the PG version of Westworld. That's what this is. It's Looney Tunes meets Westworld. Well, my name's Josh and I am happy to be here. And uh, a lot of comedians, uh, after the show, we get to talk to people, we get to meet people. They always want to ask the same questions. The, one that I get asked the most is, why do you do stand-up? How'd you get into doing stand-up? And it's pretty simple reason. Um, I feel like I'm funny all the time. And I don't mean 24 hours a day. I mean not just when I'm on stage, right? But the problem with that is when I'm funny out there in the real world, and I don't have lights and a microphone and cameras on me and people sitting in chairs next to each other facing me waiting to hear something funny, a lot of times, jokes just go to waste. So, I started doing stand-up to give my humor a second chance at life. <laughs> a good example of this was the last Valentine's Day. I was at my local grocery store in the floral department trying to find that 
perfect bouquet to take home with me. And there's another gentleman a couple feet away doing the exact same thing. And he didn't talk to me, but he was talking to me because I was the only one around and he was talking pretty loud. This is what he says. He goes, man, it's crazy how much money you got to spend on something that's just going to die. And I was like, I know. And you got to buy him flowers. <laughs> now, listen, people. I love my wife, but that may be the funniest thing I have ever said in my entire life. Okay? But he wasn't ready for it. He was like, well, good luck with that, buddy. And he just started to walk away. I was like, dude, that was gold. It's a good thing I'm on Twitter. from Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, which means I go on terrible Midwest family vacations every year. <laughs> I have no say in where we go. Two years ago, we went to Amish country. I don't know if you guys have been to Amish country, but that place is not fun at all. <laughs> okay, I, uh, I did not care for it. You know what I didn't like? I'll tell you what I didn't like. The people. I didn't like the people. I've, I'm sorry. If you're friends with them, I apologize. I just, I found them to be very hypocritical, you know? <laughs> Because they're all, we don't believe in electricity. <laughs> but we'll use it if we need to run your visa card. And I don't like that attitude, all right? I said, you go big or go home, Ezekiel. Don't plug up. It's a slippery slope. He didn't like me. Probably because his name wasn't Ezekiel. But he looked like it should have been. You know, I couldn't have been that far off, is what I'm trying to say. I think we just got started on the wrong foot, okay? Because the only reason I agreed to go in the first place was if I was allowed to take pictures that I could put on Facebook. And the first time I take a picture, I get scolded by this Amish man. He says, sir, we would appreciate if you're going to take pictures that you did not take them of us. And I said, why is that? He said, pictures give us a sense of pride and we don't like to do things that make us feel proud. I said, you're charging three grand for a kitchen table without any chairs to go with it. I'm pretty sure you're proud of that table, all right? Not proud. Why don't you tell me for the fourth time how you put that barn up in one day? You're not proud. Okay, I'm just gonna go over here and I'll just let you know that I don't care how good your pretzels are, I'm not gonna be coming back here to Amish country. And I left them a scathing Yelp review. I never heard back from a manager, which is so typical. But. Uh, Last year we did Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Been there, yeah. Gatlinburg, if you haven't been, it's an American Indian word. It means land of the couples that wear matching airbrush t-shirts. I don't know if that's accurate, but it's accurate, okay? And they always pick the same design. It's a silhouette of a much skinnier couple than the people who are wearing the t-shirts. And on the shirts, that couple, they are holding hands, confidently in love. Their feet are in the sand, they're underneath a palm tree. There's a rainbow sunset on what is clearly the ocean in the background. Then they write Gatlinburg across the top so that you know which of the islands in the Smoky Mountains that they visited, right? They're not, they're not smart people, okay? But it makes for great people watching. Now, I don't know if you like to people watch, uh, but uh, I'm a huge fan. It's free. You know, you just sit there with someone you love and talk about the folks walking by for a couple hours. And, uh, and Gatlinburg is prime pickings. I mean, I mean, get your camera ready. You're gonna see someone that you like enough to want to share them with others. And, uh, and I'd like to put this out there. If you ever take pictures when you people watch, please email them to me because my buddies and I trade them like they're baseball cards. It is, it's probably the most fun game I've ever played. I'll give you a couple tips if you think you might want to take pictures when you people watch. Number one, make sure that the flash and the sound on your phone are turned off. I know, sounds like a no-brainer, right? Guys, I've been doing this a long time. I messed up. I'm in line for security at the airport. I'm going this way, coming at me, gentleman. Hawaiian shirt, shaved face, but out of the top of his shirt was this. Perm? I don't know if that's the right. A tuft? It was the brightest, whitest, bushiest chest hair I have ever seen in my life. 
I've seen white chest hair, okay? This was next level. It was teased, possibly bleached. He looked like a Build-A-Bear whose neck had been slit to send a message to the other Build-A-Bears to get it together because the numbers are low, right? And I knew if I didn't get a picture of him, I wasn't going to be able to sleep that night. Now, here's the rub. I can't take a picture from this distance at this angle. No one's going to appreciate how awesome this thing is. If I really want the likes, I got to time it so that when he's passing by me, I can get that profile shot. Right? Really give it some depth. Now to do this, it's a timing thing, so I have this face I make, which is basically, what? I'm just checking Twitter, even though my phone's kind of pointed in your general direction. <laughs> he stops right here, I hit the button, it's like, kick flash, I was like. <laughs> There's a Pokemon on your shoulder, sir. Could you please? I'm gonna get it. Please hold still. Oh, he jumped into your obnoxious chest hair. That stinks. Maybe next time. We'll get him next time. We'll get him at the layover. So be careful. The other tip is also very, uh, obvious one, but it's what happened to me when I was in Gatlinburg, and that's to make sure you have a full battery, all right? If you're going to spend a day, people watching picture taken, charge up. Because I'm in Gatlinburg. I'm on the main drag. If you've never been there, Gatlinburg is basically just one hill. It's just, just one street, you know, with museums. Um, I mean, that's their word, not mine. I mean, call me old fashioned, but I just feel like if Cooter, the tow truck driver from the Dukes of Hazard, is the only face I can see on the front of your building, you're not allowed to call it a museum, okay? I don't care what's inside. They got a lot of gift shops. And then my favorite place to people watch in any tourist town, but especially Gatlinburg, is the old fashioned candy kitchen. I love that place so much, because no matter what time of day you walk up, you're gonna see the same thing. There's gonna be a hillbilly pressed up against the window who cannot figure out how they're making taffy on the other side of the window, and it is the greatest thing they've ever seen. They're like, get out of here, nah. Hey, come look. It's where they make it. The taffy from Cracker Barrel. Yeah, it all comes from. I don't know how they do it, even though I can see the whole process from right here. Is, they stand there, hours. And I saw her a block away, dude. The Mickey Mantle rookie card of people watching. I got so excited, I was like, oh, I've heard about you. Oh, oh, you are coming home with me. Easy, girl. Easy, girl. I'm not gonna hurt you. I got close enough, I pressed the button, nothing happened, I just pressed it again. Dead battery sign, what? No! I scared her, she ran back into Ripley's, believe it or not. <laughs> believe it or not. And I just sat down on the bench right there in between the Pancake Pantry and Fanny Farkle's Arcade. I was so mad. All this time I tracked her, I just let her get away. I wish I could pass my phone around and let you guys see how awesome she was, but I can't because I was careless. <laughs> so I'll just describe her as best I can. She had early 1990s hair. Remember that look? Pulled back tight in a ponytail, but in the front? <laughs> guys, you remember that look? I don't know if you ever saw how those got made. I showed up too early for prom one year, haven't slept a full night since. That haunts me. I'll never forget, I walk through the back door, corsage in hand, she's just standing there in front of the big mirror.
She was gorgeous. <laughs> but this lady in Gatlinburg, I don't know how else to just... She looked like someone who might frequent a Long John Silver's slash Kentucky Fried Chicken. Like a two-in-one fast food restaurant. I don't know if you guys ever go to those, but there's good people watching in there, too. Um, so any of them. I don't care what the combo is. For some reason, the average redneck brain can't seem to process that there are two businesses operating behind one counter and sharing the menu above. And the first time they see it, it just catches them off guard. They're like, okay, could I get a... Uh, Okay, do I need to be at this register if I want chicken? I just, is this like a food court or something? It's the same company. I can order off of both of them. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, well, I'm getting a family meal deal. I get two sides. Could I get a side from this side and then a side from that side? Like if I could hurry up and decide, could I go from side to side for my sides? I can, I wanna try that, okay. Um, well, extra biscuits. I mean, I knew that before I came in here. And what does Long John Silver's have? Hush puppies, what? Can I do that, two breads? Oh yeah, look it up. I know it sounds like I'm really exaggerating for the sake of stand-up comedy, but it's not as much as you think, okay? <laughs> I promise if you go to any two-in-one fast food restaurant and just grab a seat close to the register, just within earshot, within five minutes, you'll hear some trucker spit out a sentence that has never been formed in the history of words because he's buckling under the pressure of the line that's now formed behind him. He's like, oh God, I'm sorry, you guys. I just, I hadn't even thought about tacos and then I come in here and boom, right there they are next to the pizza. But if you can make wherever you go, half of it Long John Silver's, like that's where you're gonna have the best time, all right? <laughs> At any Long John Silver's, you will hear a grown man ask for extra crumbs, which is a new low for our society. <laughs> and really racist humans. Now, if I've completely lost you, Long John Silver's, it's a fast food seafood restaurant. And what they do is, is they take chicken and fish and they dip it in their batter, and then they put it in the deep fryer, and when they flip it from the deep fryer, little pieces of that batter break off. And then a pile of those little pieces form. And then people go, hey, can I get a scoop of the thing that, right there, I want some of that stuff, like the garbage on the bottom. I want some of it, like, put some of that into my treasure chest. They get all, f and I was like, did that guy just ask for more crumbs? Like, I thought I might have misheard, right? She pushes a button on the register, boop, crumbs, 10 cents. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. How often does this happen? Okay, seriously. Like, I thought I could be witnessing the first time in the history of Long John Silver's where some guy was like, listen, this is gonna sound a little crazy, but I'm a little short on cash and I have a long drive ahead of me. Could you maybe just put some of that stuff into a cup? I could snack on it while I'm on the road. I don't know. No, people. It happens so much that it has been programmed into the register. And if that's the case, right? If whatever you call that stuff has its own button, which I'm pretty sure we can all agree was not in the original business plan. <laughs> that tells me that there was a day somewhere that it went down, right? <laughs> and as a professional people watcher, I'm just mad I wasn't there to see it. You know, because I just picture some toothless manager storming out of the back. Hey, somebody's going to have to start paying for these crunchies, all right? I can't be giving this stuff away all day if everybody's going to ask for it. We got to figure something out. Let's just be honest. Y'all love free stuff. That's what it is, ain't it? Yeah, it is. That's why we had to get rid of our tartar sauce pump and switch to packets, put them behind the counter, limit two per customer, because y'all were pumping it right into your boats. Are you kidding me? Nobody needs that much tartar sauce. And I'm sick of dealing with it. And he tries to slam the door, but it's that metal kitchen door, right? So just... <laughs> 10 minutes later, no one's speaking because you can still hear him in the back ticked off. I ain't selling down Tommy, I'm sick of this. They don't pay me enough to put up with this. I'm so mad my hand's shaking, I'm supposed to bowl tonight, now what? I'm done. Well, I don't care if I said it before. I mean it this time. You watch. As soon as I can afford that lift kit and them Luke Bryan tickets, you ain't never gonna see me again. I'm out. 
Well, of course I'm going. Florida Georgia line's open, and I ain't gonna miss that. They're the only dudes that can settle me down right now. You do that for me? All right, you take the Nelly part. You make me wanna roll my window. Okay, listen. Obviously, I've thought way too much about a day that probably never happened, okay? I'll give you that. But I have questions, and I want them answered. And the only people that can answer them are those in charge at the Yum! Brands. If you're not familiar with who they are, Pizza Hut, Taco Bell, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Long John Silver's, a and Root Beer. Now, I don't know what they're on, but they're on something, okay? All their ideas, whether it's for the restaurant, the two-in-one fast food concept itself, I feel like they just get together in a big room. Hey, hey Carl, you got anything? Um, there have been several occasions where I was like, I want fried chicken and pizza at the same time, but probably was not in a, in a, st a stable position to drive two separate places. <laughs> could we do something about that? Yeah, I think we could do something about that. We could probably sell both of those here, right? Yeah, all right, we can put that down, save some money on rent. Phil, what do you guys got? Okay, we're representing Pizza Hut, and um, you know the doughy part around the outside of the pizza? The crust? The crust, dude. I told you it was called the crust. <laughs> what if, and I'm just spitballing here, we remove the crust and replace it with a ring of soft pretzel, pigs in a blanket, and if we can't do that, could we just fill it with cheese? <laughs> well, we can certainly look into one of those, if not all of them. I think those are all good ideas our audience would certainly enjoy. Uh, Ricky, what about you? I've always wanted to make taco shells out of Doritos. That's what I'm talking about. That needs to be, put that down first. We gotta figure that one out first. Maybe the greatest idea that's ever come out of these summits. We'll start with nacho cheese, Cool Ranch in the fourth quarter. People love little red and green flecks on their taco shells at Christmas. I love it, I love everything I'm hearing. Taco Bell, they, they crack me up, right? Because they know if you're gonna eat there, you're gonna eat there. Right? Nobody's on the fence about Taco Bell. Nobody's like, well, let's just wait and see what the next commercial looks like. You know if you're going to go back or not. And Taco Bell knows that. That's why they can put out a product that has the exact same ingredients as three other products on their current menu. They just change the name and or shape of it and will make you feel dumb for asking about it. They're like, what we have for the spring, this is seasoned steak, Lettuce, cheese, tomato, and sour cream encased in a flour tortilla. Anybody have any questions? Um, yeah, that sounds like a steak burrito. Well, it's not, okay? A steak burrito is rolled up, okay? With this, we fold the sides in, we press it with a t-shirt iron. I don't know what's so hard to understand about the technology we've invested in the crunch wrap. That's what we're calling it, it's a, it's a crunch wrap. Their desserts, they don't even try with their desserts. They just take some other dessert you're kind of familiar with and change it a little bit, you know? We have Cinnabon Bites. Isn't that just a cut up Cinnabon? I mean, yeah, but we cut it up for you, okay? You could say gracias. We took the time to put it into this drink cup that was already sitting right here. And how much of the lifting do we have to do? I remember a couple years ago, the hostess company went bankrupt, and then like a month later, some mysterious entity saved them from bankruptcy. I thought for sure it was Taco Bell. I was waiting for that commercial. For years, I was waiting for that commercial, right? Just, it's the Twinkie Burrito. We have stuffed a Twinkie full of taco meat, deep fried it. Sir, would you like Twinkie cream or sour cream? I don't care if it's coffee cream. I would like my Twinkie burrito, some fire sauce, two ho-ho lupas, and a Mountain Dew. The blue Mountain Dew, too. I want the Baja. I mean, you can turn on the TV and know how we feel about food. There's a reason there's not a show called Gluten-Free Vegan Cupcake Wars. No one wants to watch it. 
Nobody's like, hey, did you see Salad Boss last night? <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. And vegans, I don't know if there's any vegans in here with enough strength to raise your hand. Is there one? Did some, was that her? Was that someone calling out for me? Oh, I'm a vegan. Help me. I need a burger. Oh, I'm envious of vegans. If you can do it, good for you. I ain't about that life. I've had one vegan experience. It did not go well. I'm in Jacksonville, Florida. I'm walking down the street. I pass a bakery with all these beautiful things in the window. So I just kind of poke my head in and I go, excuse me, ma'am, what are those on the bottom? She says, that's a root beer float donut. And it just came out of the oven about 20 minutes ago. Do you want one? I was like, no, I want two. But <laughs> only put one in the bag because the other one ain't making it out of this store. <laughs> so she hands me the one over the counter. I take a bite as we walk to the register and I was like, <laughs> She's like, sir, did you know this is a vegan baker? I was like, nope. And she's like, yep, that's what I figured. She goes, see this sign right here? It says, no product contains an ingredient that comes from an animal. And I was like, well, that's ironic, because this is some bullshit. No, listen, I didn't say it. I didn't say it, but I should have, because she deserved to hear it. And you do deserve to hear it. She should have known when I came through that door that I was in the wrong place. Look at me, look at me. I guarantee I don't look like any of her regulars, okay? And I would have had a lot more respect for her if she would have been like, uh, sir, I think you might want the place down the street. Yeah, that's okay. It happens all the time. It's right down the street. Love everything you're looking for. Milk, eggs, butter, taste. Right down the street. Just, yeah. I don't know. Maybe two blocks. I'm sure you'll call an Uber. You can wait in here. I know. It's at least 70 degrees with no humidity outside. I wouldn't want you melting. All I'm saying is, I don't know who came up with that phrase, looks can be deceiving, but I bet they just walked out of a vegan bakery. That's what I'm trying to say. I think you can tell how much we love food based on the shows that are popular, you know? Man versus food. They're on round two of that. They got a new guy because the first one exploded or whatever. Like, do we need to do that show again? I don't think we do. Do we not learn the first time around? I did. I learned what will happen to your body if you eat terrible every day for six years. And if you think I'm wrong, watch an episode from season one of Man Vs. Food, then immediately watch an episode from season six of Man Vs. Food. You'll see the difference. That guy was way skinnier when he started. And he had an amazing vocabulary. Where'd that go? Watch season one. The guy is super articulate. He's like, folks, there's a symphony of flavor going on in my mouth right now. When I crunch down, I got heat from the peppers. I got sweet from the relish, the salt and the bacon. This place is amazing. They've made perfect harmony in the form of a sandwich. But then six years later, he's like. This is yummy. This is so good. I think it's too easy to eat terrible. That's what I think it is, you know? Because it wasn't that long ago where it's like, you want to eat bad, you got a couple places you can go to. Now they compete with each other to see who can offer something worse for you. Wendy's has a sandwich called Son of Baconator. Their food is having kids when they're closed. Do you understand how bad that is for you? That's how I order it, too. I'm like, uh, give me a bacon air and one of his children. I don't know. You got a boy? They're, they usually taste better. <laughs> Golden Corral is a thing. You can go there once. You can't go twice. Because there's no way to not look at other people eating there. There's no regulations on what people are and aren't allowed to do with their food. And that's why it's, I'm out. 
It's like, no, I understand the value of giving me access to this chocolate fondue fountain for $8, but I'm not going to use it because I just saw that guy pass by with his prime rib. <laughs> hey, that's not gravy. Oh, I know. <laughs> What's that? It's whipped cream on corn on the cob. It's called cream corn, all right? I'm trying to have lunch, if you don't mind. You can order bad food off a of TV. QVC sells food, the shopping channel, they have food on there. You can have four dozen individually wrapped frosted sugar cookies delivered to your front door. They'll give you six months to pay it off. That blows my mind that that's an option. Why is that an option? You know what I'm saying? Like, I get it. If you're buying a laptop or a living room set, sure. But if you have to put cookies on easy pay, maybe don't get the cookies, okay? And then the next channel over tells you how to get rock hard abs in 90 days. I fell for that one too, P90X, I got it. It's a 90 day program. I made it 15 minutes, about 15 minutes. It was hard. Nobody on those DVDs looked like me. Once again, that should have been my clue that I was in the wrong place. Every person on there yelling at me. Like they know me, telling me to keep going no matter how much it burns. Well, you look like you've been doing it since you could walk. How about just one guy that looks like me laying on the ground out of breath before the warm-up's over? You know what I'm saying? I might check out disc two just to see what happened to that guy. They're like, well, we lost Kevin yesterday, but we're glad that you're back. Because today is all about that core. for me and I'm sure you're like well you probably had a bad attitude about it no I didn't I had the right attitude I upgraded to the multicolored resistance bands I expedited the shipping I wasn't even looking for it I'm just on the couch minding my own business watching TV and this dude comes on he's like hey man you want a six pack yeah you want it in six months Three would be better. <laughs> Done. So I called him, put it in, and within seconds, immediately regretted every decision I had ever made in my life that led me up to that moment. Because I was terrible at it, right from the beginning. And I think that's why I got so frustrated, you know? Because like, let's say this is where my health was. And I see the P90X DVD, and I'm like, that's it, that's gonna be my ticket. I'm about to get jacked up. <laughs> But I was so bad at it that when I took it out, I didn't want to do anything. I just sat around watching TV, eating Oreos. I tried every kind of Oreo they came out with. Almost out of spite, like I was trying to hurt P90X's feelings. You know when you see your ex, when you're with your new one, you're like, this is who I'm with now. That's how I was with P90X, just eating Oreos right in their face. How you like that, Tony? And by the time I snapped out of that funk and I felt like I wanted to be active again, I was down here. I was like, dude, this is not fair. I'm fatter because I tried P90X. <laughs> And that's how it went with everything. Diets, I tried every kind of diet. I was on this Minecraft diet, three square meals a day. <laughs> Did nothing. Exercise programs, gym memberships. About the Fitbit, everybody was like, Josh, that's what you need is a Fitbit. Technology, you can track your progress right from your phone, you'll love it. Got the nicest Fitbit they make. Vibrates, sends you little messages. I've just learned to ignore it, like everything else that's ever tried to help me live a longer, happier life. Be like, D -d -d -d. wanna go for a walk? No, I'm good. <laughs> what I need is a quit bit, that's what I need. I need someone to invent that. Just a device that'll buzz and send me little messages that reaffirm this lifestyle I've grown to love. D -d -d. You're doing great, go back to bed. Oh, okay. <laughs> Who wants meatballs? I want meatballs. <laughs> They're on QVC right now. Oh, okay. And they were. I'm loaded up on meatballs for two years. I'll have them paid off in February. It's great. <laughs> what I realized is that I was watching P90X in the first place. Like that was what was doing me wrong. Cause if you watch it long enough, you're like, everybody looks like this. 
you know? But now what I do is when it comes on, I turn it off and I put on train wreck TV to remind myself there's a lot of people out there way worse off than I am. So if I can just maintain this, I'm cool with that. <laughs> That's the way to do it. Like it's so much easier to achieve your goals when you don't set any. Like seriously, you just wake up, you're like, I've won the day. I was watching those shows already, I was just watching them wrong. Intervention, Freaky Eaters, I didn't know I was pregnant, all those shows. I used to think they were sad, now I think they're great for building self-esteem. And I understand some people have a problem with that, I'm just telling you what works for me. Because sometimes I'll be sitting in my hotel and I'll think, I don't know if I'm gonna have a good show tonight. And then I turn on My Strange Addiction, I'm like, yes, I am gonna have a good show tonight. And I know I am, because I'm not gonna go out and eat toilet paper when it's over, that's how I know. I don't know if you watch My Strange Addiction, but I have a strange addiction for that show. I'm kind of obsessed with it. It's fantastic. Every episode is pretty much the same. There's a woman eating or drinking something no human is supposed to consume. And then there's a guy doing kind of creepy stuff. One lady, my favorite is this one lady who eats couch cushions. She opens up the pillows on her couch and then eats the stuffing out of them. And my favorite part about her is when she's done, she immediately zips it back up like she's trying to keep the rest of it fresh for later, right? Like get the hair out, zip, chip clip. So funny, so funny. All those shows are on the Learning Channel. <laughs> That's hilarious to me. So funny. We have 700 stations. One of them is called the Learning Channel. That's where you put those shows? What are you trying to teach me? Because I'll tell you what, the only thing I've learned from watching the Learning Channel is there's crazy people everywhere. And that's accurate. I don't care what part of town you live in, there are crazy people close by you. And if you ever want to meet them, just see what they're like. It's super easy. Have a garage sale. That's all you do. Put it on Craigslist and in the paper that you're having a garage sale. And a freak show will form on your lawn two hours before the garage sale is even scheduled to begin. I'm looking through the blinds, I was like, we said 10, right? <laughs> well, they're here. <laughs> Look like the walking dead out there. I was like, <laughs> Brains. <laughs> no, that says bargains. <laughs> I don't know if you've had a garage sale and you know what I'm talking about but it makes me hate people. I'm not gonna lie to you, it really bothers me. I don't know why I do it all the, every year, but. Because those people I just talked about, they're a real thing. There's a term for them in the garage sale community. They're called early birds. And apparently I'm a jerk, because I didn't put it in the ad. They weren't supposed to be there. This lady's just standing out there. I was like, can I help you, ma'am? She's like, well, I'm here for the garage sale. I'm like, well, you're about two hours early. Well, it didn't say no early birds. This is how bad it got. This is not a joke. Last time we had a garage sale, press the button to open the door. There's a woman crouched down who raised up with the garage door. Like she's in a 90s boy band video, just kind of stepping in. I was like, get out of here. No, this is not Black Friday. There is nothing in here worth the effort you are exerting right now. I get so mad. Same characters, just different faces. I'll tell you who the worst one is. Guy who just watched three episodes of American Pickers and now thinks he's Indiana Jones. This guy, every time, just walks right up. Hey man, you got any antiques? No sir, I'm 35. I don't know why you thought this was the place to begin a treasure hunt. But here's the problem. No matter how annoyed you get, you gotta be nice to him. You can't say whatever you want. That's hard for me to do. Do you understand? I'm like, no, sir, there's no antiques, but uh, there's some great deals. <laughs> this toaster, check this out. We got married last year. We don't need two toasters. So we're selling this one and it's a dollar and they'll talk you down. <laughs> Doesn't matter how good your pricing is. If they've seen an episode of Pawn Stars, it's negotiating time. Now he's sweating over my toaster for half an hour. Oh, buddy, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I need a toaster and that's a, what's that? It's a sunbeam. 
I mean, it's all right, you know, it ain't like a KitchenAid or a Hamilton Beach, you know, something I might get excited about. I'm trying to find one of them Oster toasters. Anybody around here selling one of them? It's a stainless steel, double wide chamber. That thing will burn a frozen bagel in 12 seconds. That thing's bad. This is, I mean, what am I gonna do with this? Make toast? I mean, this is... Well, the springs are still good. What'd you say, a dollar? No, oh, man. No, I'd like to do business with you, but I mean, we're just so far apart right now. I don't know. I mean, I could probably, what's today? Wednesday? <laughs> it's gonna be tough, but. I mean, I could. I could probably go 25 cents. 25 cents? I'll beat it over your face for free. How about that, buddy? Because let me tell you something. Watching you leave with a broken nose will be worth way more than a dollar at this point. It's a dollar, sir. It's a toaster. That still works for a dollar. No, screw this guy, honey. I got... I got thrown out of my own garage set. She made me leave. But I couldn't just go. I was like, all right, I'm leaving. But I want everybody to know something. I will not be disrespected in my own garage. And because of how all you're acting, I'm taking the toaster. <laughs> and the Beanie Baby with the mystery stain. And the PlayStation 1 without any games, controllers, or a power cord, and a lid that does have to be taped closed when you want to use it. That's right, they're all coming back inside. And I carried them back into the house, along with my pride. <laughs> and the next day, the very next day, as I drove that stuff to Goodwill, where I would lose money in the gas that it took to get it there. <laughs> I got on the phone with my manager. I said, book me for a special on VidAngel because I got some stuff I need to get off my chest. So thank you guys for listening. I hope you had a good time. And we'll see you next time.